Hey, what's up, guys? That's right. <laughs> Don't worry, you'll see. You'll see why I have this hat. But uh, we got Lafon here. This is the, the this is the guy people want to talk to. This is the the guy that everybody wants is talking about Lafon all the time. Where is he coming back? You know, you like you're, you're the only uh, source for Lafon. You know, right now. But that's gonna change. I think you have an upcoming uh, possible podcast coming up, right? Um, the myth of the 20th century guys are going to do something for about a year, but I had to talk to Al on Skype for them to get the sound quality, and I'm too stupid to use the platform that they normally record on. So, uh, the people that I stay with in Baltimore are myth of the 20th century listeners, so... They volunteered to set me up on their big gaming desktop computer with headphones and all that stuff, so so I could uh, do one without blowing my eye up. Right, because speaking so when you speak loud, unfortunately, it does blow that that nerve up by your eye. So, uh, all right, well that's that's cool. So now so maybe. Maybe November. November, all right. Well, I look forward to it. Those are like some of your best... Uh, well, your, your, every appearance is your best appearance. But oh, I think I've blown a couple. Nah. <laughs> well, there was the one with... Who is that? That Australian uh, jerk-off who converted to uh, the chosen people. Luke Ford, remember that? Oh, yeah. That's where I met Dennis Dale. Right. You know, who's was missing... Yeah. I don't know what, what happened to him, too, but... Yeah, yeah that, that Luke Ford, that's when someone called you a boomer faggot. Yes, yeah, well, in I... In the chat. Uh, that's cool. <laughs> that's cool. Um, you know. That was, yeah. Uh, that well, was... Yeah, well, well, whatever you want me to be, um, <laughs> I don't have enough energy to oppose <laughs> <laughs> the rollings. <laughs> yeah, well, also, you had the uh, the myth of the 20th century where the, the guy said that you are a bad word. You are the, the, you I are essentially that. a bad word. That was great. And he hopes the cop, like, you know, pops you in the head. Yeah, that was great. Yeah. That was... <laughs> uh, I, I liked that one a lot. That was great. So anyway, Arkham Reporter, uh, Damien, the visitor from the beyond, the cosmic being who's coming uh, in a week. That's right. He basically was wondering about, in terms of, you know, he, he, he likes the videos with the, the financial stuff, like how you make the money, okay. right? how you're a baller, as they say. But in terms of, he's curious about, and I'm curious too, we're all curious about expenses. What is, what is like, when you, the money you make, what do you spend it on? How does it go, like, by the year? What's your biggest expenditures? You know, how do you stretch a dollar in Biden's America? Like, how do you do this? Uh, I, it depends on where I'm at. Some places I spend zero dollars uh, if I'm with certain people. Uh, I don't spend anything. Um, it, the Pacific Northwest is expensive for me. I don't like having my lady paying for everything. She, well, she likes to go out a lot. And she's willing to pay for everything, but my ego gets in the way, so, yeah, yeah, you know. When I do go out, uh, I feel some of the expenses, and just uh, uh, and I don't I don't get any side money. I don't get any coaching money when I'm there. The uh, cost uh, the cost of a beer in the Bay Area is like eight dollars. So I don't even drink when I'm there. Um, the uh, on the train, I try to just get coffee, but if I get, if I drink four coffees, you know, that's eleven, twelve dollars a day on the train. There's really nothing I can eat on the train. It's on Rick's list, but uh, I'll sometimes uh, get a beer and a shot uh, to go to sleep at night, and that's almost twenty bucks for a beer and a shot on the train. Um, when I'm in Baltimore, it's five dollars for me to take the bus all day, but two thirds of Baltimore area buses have disabled money meters, so you could just take two dollars and gamble on how many of the money meters are going to 
uh, be disabled and maybe not spend anything. <laughs> uh, so, so that's kind of variable. I don't. Uh, uh, I don't uh, spend much money on groceries or or beer uh, when I'm in the Baltimore area. Uh, if I go out with Big Ron or uh, Charles, they don't even let me pay if we go to a bar. I will buy, I, I like to buy stuff for my host's wife, she's a sweet lady. Uh, she was kind enough to uh, pretend I wasn't uh, moaning and groaning on her living room floor for six weeks when I was skittering around the living, living room floor last year. So I try to buy like little presents for the ladies uh, of the guys that I'm staying with. Uh, but it, it adds up pretty quick. I'd say when I'm in Baltimore, my biggest expense is buying shrimp and pork chops for Joanne and Georgia to cook for us for dinner. Mm. And then, uh, you know, I'll, I'll buy, uh, I'll spend three or four dollars a day on getting uh, 25 ounces of uh, terrible white beer uh, <laughs> when I'm staying with her. It, um, it's, not, it's not much. So uh, I publish my annual expenses. Uh, every December or January. If you look on the author's note tag on my website, you'll be able to find all my expenses uh, for 2023. I think I published that around the first of the year. Wow. So, uh, that uh, the train tickets to go, uh, it takes me about 10 trains to get from Baltimore. Uh, out to the west coast and back again over the course of a few months and it rounds out to about a hundred dollars a train so it'll be about nine hundred dollars mm. for me to circle the country over the course of three months and it takes two months for that money to build up Man. from my writing income uh, so I have to time uh, I have to save up and time for when I'm going to need to stay in a hotel like San Jose I like staying there for uh, between three and nine days because I'm next to a used bookstore and it's quiet I don't know anybody right. and I can really get a lot of writing done it's kind of where I turn the corner when I'm well you going know somebody there. there. <laughs> well, I, I met, met, met somebody in a uh, bodega in Oakland uh, once upon a time yeah. so I, the uh, the staying in a hotel or motel is really expensive. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's about $130 a night. Uh, you know, it's about the cheapest price you can get anywhere. And uh, in the future, I'd like to be able to do more of that because I see little dive motels from the train and small towns where the train stop. And some of them are almost ghost towns. I wouldn't mind spending a weekend or a week in a place like that and write, writing a short novel. Uh, I don't like to write about. I don't like to write fiction set somewhere where I haven't been. Mm. Uh, and ideally, I like to write it when I'm there. Right. Okay. So in terms of uh, liquor, right? What's the, what's your uh, for you know? What's your go? What's like? What's the liquor for like the the man trying to stretch a dollar? Oh, uh, okay, so Castillo Rum, uh, we were drinking that last night. Yeah. I've gotten that for as cheap as $7. Nice. It, it's the smoothest rum that comes in glass. Uh, I usually, if I'm someplace where, uh, where beer is sold in supermarkets and cases, I get Bush Light. Yeah, Bush Light's yeah, pretty uh, standard. Uh, yeah, if I'm in a dive bar, they'll usually have Coors Light on tap. A nicer bullet. bar will have Miller Light on tap. And, uh, a, a really good dive bar will have 16 ounce can of Bush Light yeah. for like a dollar cheaper than yeah. what the on tap stuff is. Uh, so, uh, that, 
that's all that's all I drank I had saved a receipt from a dive bar and uh, handwritten by this really pretty old Chinese chick who uh, handwrites all the receipts for her patrons and uh, I was going to show it to you and then I washed my wallets in my pants what did you do you, you, I, I, you I left washed my, yeah yeah <laughs> I left Wash. the wallets in my pants, and they Go fortunately more. my, uh, they, you know, my most of my stuff that was in there survived. But that, the ink on that didn't survive, so I don't have it to show to you. Mm. Okay, so um, that I try. Uh, I generally lose a pound a day when I'm staying with the Brick Mouse and Bride. I just drink coffee, and he gets me instant coffee. And uh, I drink his protein powder. He takes all like these yeah. protein supplements, and then I pretty much just don't eat. Right, that's the one way um, of save. You actually save money by fasting, essentially not eating. So I'll stay or at his eat. place for three days, yeah. and I'll lose four pounds, and then I'll go over to Joanne's for three days and, and I'll gain, gain four pounds. Right, exactly. Because she she makes me eat twice a day, and mm. she's real good. Yeah. You know, so like so. you know. So eating salt and having like a day of fasting, it is, it does help the wallet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tighten the belt, literally. So, all right. Oh, no, no, we're just talking about the, the finances. I'm trying to think of anything else in terms of like books, right? Or getting like you like to, what is your that bookstore? Obviously, in San Jose, is is it been a treasure trove for you? When you're out here, like what you Barnes and Noble, despite its reputation, you find usually something interesting there. Uh, yeah, yeah, Barnes & Noble is an interesting study. We maybe do a separate video on that. But I get, uh, most of my books I use in the East were mailed to me by readers. They mm. want me to read them and do reviews on them. Right, right. Uh, Rick buys me books. Uh, right. Every time I show up at his place, he's got books on the guest bed waiting for me. Mm-hmm. So when I'm in the East, I'm usually not buying books unless I'm with you, and then you don't let me pay for it. You What? It. You buy it at the, uh, you're like a Chinese dude. No, you know? you, you you buy your own you stuff. You don't let the guests buy. Nobody's buy cheaper anything. than you than me. Um, <laughs> so, no. so I've uh, uh, still uh, I'm doing more hard copy print books as far as reading now since I got my glasses fixed, but I still mostly use uh, mostly work off of ODT documents of primary sources that my editor. Uh, sent me but the book that you bought me two weeks ago the Scythian Empire is a really good book it's one of those rare cases where an obscure academic historian writing on an obscure subject has access to a lot of stuff that I don't have access to yeah. he knows the latest archaeological digs and latest translations and that can be very important for right. some of my studies plus he'll have other sources, primary sources, footnoted. Right. So there's no, in terms of like, uh, not just, I wouldn't say entertainment, because it's not entertainment, but in terms of resources, books and all that, you, there's not, there's no, th- there's no dearth of that. You have plenty of access to everything, a lot of things for when, relatively nothing. When I'm in Portland, uh, uh, my lady likes to shop at the thrift stores, and there's always a book section. And, uh, but, you know, so I'll check out the history, and I've gotten some really good histories out of those. There's, it's usually mostly crap, uh, but you'll find something. Uh, yeah. There it is, decent. I got one on the first horseman that was a very good book. Wow. And of course, I really like the the used bookstore in San Jose. It's got it's got stacks 14 feet high. And Stacks. I think it's 36 feet deep, that room. Wow. Uh, and, and they've got stuff piled on the floor, and it's all edged out. Uh, it, it's a massive historical I tell you, resource. Man, that's one of the things that there's still some left. Uh, there were so many more decades ago. Uh, used bookstores are like a literal treasure trove, man. I got I to gotta say, getting all serious now. All right, man. That's cool. So that's it. All right. <laughs>